now is Tulsi Gabbard, former 2020 Democratic presidential hey, she's candidate she's and pop. former Hawaii Congresswoman. Tulsi, um, uh, the number we've approved for Ukraine weapons hey. uh, and aid. And she would have made a beautiful is, VP, bro. Is, she would have made a gorgeous VP. Look at her. Look at her. Is $70 billion. So I said seven. That's wishful thinking. So Americans are seeing their finances hollowed out here at home as we ship billions abroad. And the war looks like it's going in the wrong direction. How, how do we reach any conclusion except this is the ongoing humiliation of America in our foreign policy once again? Yeah, well, Laura, you're, you're bringing up such critical points here that the American people need to understand the seriousness of the situation that the Biden administration and leaders in Washington have. Even her tone is amazing. I'm sorry for crushing, guys. It's just, it's, I'm, I'm, okay. The seriousness of the situation that the Biden administration and leaders in Washington have put us in. So we go beyond kind of the day-to-day -day battle updates of what's happening in our proxy war against Russia in Ukraine and actually take a step back and focus on the big picture and the great threat that we face, which is the reality that this war is continuing to escalate. President Biden himself says he has no idea when or how it's going to end, but we know where this escalation leads. It leads us closer and closer to the brink of a nuclear war with Russia. That's exactly where it leads us. Um, and just from me listening to what he's doing, he's every single time that he's he has a microphone, <laughs> he's talking about how he's arming the enemy of Putin. <laughs> how he's going to do whatever. I don't care if I got to bankrupt this whole country in order to arm Ukraine. That's what I'm going to, going to do. And that's what keep on happening. And the person that he keep on naming, well, we're going to blame Putin for the gas. We're going to blame Putin for the oil. We're going to blame Putin for everything. As a matter of fact, we're going to give all of our money to the Ukraine so that they can take Putin up out of here. Then what happened after Putin whooped their tail? After Putin finished whooping their ass, <laughs> he's going to look at Biden and be like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, this is crazy, bro. It leads us closer and closer to the brink of a nuclear war with Russia. Uh, we just saw the other day in New York City, I'm sure you saw how they put out a PSA telling residents of New York City, hey, here's what you do in the event of a nuclear attack. Uh, go inside, stay inside, and stay tuned. I almost fell out of my chair when I saw that PSA because it's insane. They're treating this as though we're like back in the 50s and 60s when you know teachers are telling kids to go under your desk and you'll be protected from a nuclear attack. It's crazy. The reality is President Biden, members of Congress, leaders in our country, the wealthy, they will have a safe place to be in the event of a nuclear war that they are behind <laughs> causing, while the rest of us in, in America and Russia, people around the world, will be decimated from this event. And yet uh -oh. they treat it as though it's nothing. It's nothing to take seriously. They're even making plans on how they can continue to wage this war from an underground bunker. This is the seriousness of the threat that we face and, and how crazy and disturbing it is that President Biden and people in his administration can be so nonchalant about Cavalier. how they are the ones who are continuing to drive this forward. Cavalier, yeah, exactly. I mean Extremely cavalier. You know, that's a good word for that. Extremely cavalier about the moves that they are making. I think it's absolutely destructive, man. And I, the only thing that gives me any type of um, um, calm is that I know that we will whoop anybody's ass. That's it. I know that our country will pretty much mop the floor with anybody right now. But at the end of the day, if you have a leader that's constantly putting you in that position, knowingly putting you in that position and getting, getting rid of our finances, what happens if we do have to go to war? We're not going to have the money for it. We're financing somebody else's. We're already in the rears. I mean, come on now. It's we we are not in the rear. I mean, it's it's crazy, man. And I just wanted to pause it on Tulsi again. The only issue I got with her and the way she speak, to be honest with you, the only issue I got with her because her tone is immaculate. I know y'all not here to talk about the tone of Tulsi Gabbard. Y'all want to talk about Biden and all of the bad moves he's making. Come on, say less. Already know. We already know that. But Tulsi. She doesn't always have to sound like a politician. She don't have to be so controlled. She can loosen up a bit. And I'm not being sexist. I, I'm talking about everybody. That's something that y'all loved about Trump. The fact that he wasn't so 
political with his moves. He was just, he was just a regular ass dude, man. Sometimes that's, that's, that's what we need sometimes. We need a regular person who still have that intelligence in order to do something about whatever's going on in the world. You know what I mean? I know that makes absolutely no sense, but you know what I mean? That's my two pennies. That's, that's, that's definitely my two pennies, but I think that, um, and, and I know people who, I know people who think that Trump is doing an okay job. Uh, tonight, the New York Times, Tulsi, is reporting that Ukrainians say they need faster shipments of long-range artillery and other uh, sophisticated weapons to blunt Russia's steady advance. So the Pentagon now is concerned about potentially depleting our stockpiles in the coming months. So the word depletion is, is just becoming too common for Americans to hear these days. Our finances are being depleted. Our weapons are being depleted. Yes. Our artillery stockpiles, be, our oil is being depleted. Our baby formula. Don't don't forget that. You know what I mean? Babies need formula too when we go to daggone war. Huh? Some of them babies might have to go. From the Strategic Petroleum Reserves, our spirit is being depleted by this administration. Yeah, you're, you're completely right. And, and that's where this trip that President Biden is taking now, he'll soon be going to Saudi Arabia, really exposes what a complete farce his whole autocracy versus democracy foreign policy is. He's saying, hey, we've got to go and get help to wage war against Russia and uh, in order to save, quote unquote, democracy. And I'm going to go talk to a bunch of, of autocratic dictators and ask them for oil and ask them for help to be able to do it. We see that with Saudi Arabia, a, an Islamist autocracy. We see that with Turkey, uh, another guy who wants to be caliph of his own new, um, you know, caliphate and Ottoman Empire who's guilty. See, Tul Tulsi is too cute to be a daggone um, president. She is. She is. She's a little too, little too attractive. <laughs> Y'all like, man, shut the hell out about Tulsi. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> you never, you never know what you're gonna get over here. <laughs> but she's just too attractive to be a president. She just is. I just, I just had to say that, man. She's just too attractive to be a president. And I don't care how she takes it. Even I already know she watches the channel. I, I know she, <laughs> no, she don't. Who wants to be caliph of his own new, um, you know, caliphate and Ottoman Empire, who's guilty of genocide against the Kurds? There, it, it, it is, it is uh, a sham. It is a lie that the American people need to see straight through and hold leaders accountable for that lie and for the cost that they are bringing on to the American people and, frankly, to the world. The further they escalate this war. Yeah, Mohammed bin Bonesaw is going to demand a lot for any oil that he gives us. Mohammed bin gives Bonesaw. It's going to be like the Godfather. How's nothing sound to you? That's what he's, that's what he's going to do. Uh, Tulsi, it's great to see you tonight, as always. Yes, it is, hey, girl. Sean Hannity here. Hey. It's very great to see you, girl. <laughs> nah, but um, listen, <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. And I know y'all don't either. Um, and I'm always looking for bright sides. I'm always looking for bright spots. Um, unlike some of the people who watch the channel, I'm looking for bright spots in Biden because um, he's the leader of the free world right now. And um, and I want him to do well. I want him to do well because what he does affects me and my family. Does that make sense? Whoever's in that office, I want them to do well, period. I don't care who they are. I want them to do a, I want them to do a smashing job. I want them to... Like, I want people around the world in, in them other countries to, to look at our president and be like, yeah, we got a strong one. We ain't going to F with him. They know what they're doing over there. We need to do things like them. Now we're not. We're not doing anything that anybody are trying to follow our lead on. If anything, we're following everybody else's lead. And that sucks, man. But y'all know more than me. So let me know in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van, and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside the Patreon as well. Y'all have been amazing, per usual, man. For real. <laughs> y'all have been dope. Love y'all.